New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft knows a thing or two about running a professional sports team. Big day for you. In fact, he's got four things that prove it. But even the most successful men start somewhere. And long before his fourth Super Bowl, before building Gillette Stadium, and even before hiring Bill Belichick, the man who once declared us all to be Patriots cut his teeth as a lobster. Boston lobsters were part of world team tennis. It was a league starting in the early 70s. Home box office presents world team tennis. I love tennis, and if I've done anything right in the NFL, I think part of it was having the learning curve of the experience of owning a team in the 70s. As a young paper products magnate in 1975, Robert Kraft was eager to get into the sports business. He found his opportunity in Philadelphia when their professional tennis team, the Freedoms, went bankrupt. Kraft and some partners purchased the franchise, moved it to Boston, and changed the name. People say, why the name? Well, if you think about one of the most effective shots in tennis is the lob. So Boston lobsters. You know, it's New England, it's people come here to have it, but it's a great shot in tennis. So we thought it was a pretty cool name. From Boston's Walter Brown Arena, the lobsters against the Phoenix Rackets. We played at Boston University in a small arena. But I realized we'd do the advertising and the selling and get people to come in and buy tickets. But we didn't get any parking revenue, any concessions. It all went to the venue. And I said, if I ever own a professional sports team, I'm going to control the venue. Three all. Through Kraft's first two years of ownership, the Lobsters failed to produce a winning season. But in a sign of things to come, a pair of future Hall of Famers would change his team's fortune. What do you see the future for the Lobsters? <clears throat> well, we're going to be tough to beat. When we brought in Roy Emerson as our coach, we did very well. And then I learned the importance of having a star player. We had to do something to spark our fan base. And until we brought Martina Navratilova in, we weren't even able to get any mentions in the local papers or let fans know that we were in town. The first serve. She's been getting a very high percentage of those first serves. And... <laughs> oh, my heavens. Martina can do no wrong, it seems, tonight. I'll always remember, it's a woman who was on global TV winning Wimbledon, and then a few days later is opening up for the Lobsters. With the world's number one ranked women's player leading the way, Boston reached the league finals in 1978, but lost to Jerry Buss's LA Strings one year before he purchased the LA Lakers. As the decade came to an end, so did the lobsters, but not before their owner learned one last lesson. We actually were making good money, but you're only as good as your partners in a league like that. And six or eight teams were losing money. And rather than let the team go bankrupt, I paid every obligation we had, and we just shut it down. So that told me something about if you're going into the sports business and it's a partnership, you want to be in a very solid league. Go, oh, baby! And that's the good thing about the NFL and revenue sharing. Tom takes the step, back on us, looks right, firing for Gronkowski, he caught it! Now it comes down to how well you manage against your competition and what kind of organization you attract and how much stability you have. You know, the coaching, star player, controlling your venue were all lessons I learned in world team tennis. They are amazing, those Boston Lobsters. But that's the story of my life. Some of the most foolhardy things on the surface in the beginning turned out to be great. 